Hello, everybody. Um, I should say uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening, because I can see from the chat that we've already had, uh, as we're waiting for the webinar to start, that we have uh, participants from all over the world, which is fantastic to see. I think we've covered pretty much every continent. I've seen um, countries like India, Israel, Argentina, the USA, Saudi Arabia, Kyrgyzstan, Italy, um, all sorts of wonderful places. I'm not sure if we've got Australia or uh, New Zealand covered here for Australasia. However, um, pretty much everywhere else is. Um, I'm hoping everyone can see and hear me. If you could just tap into the chat box to let me know that uh, you can hear me. I'm getting lots of yeses, which is good. Um, so welcome to today's uh, Transformative Teachers webinar from Trinity College London. Um, just before we get started and I introduce Anna, who will be uh, the main speaker for today, just a little bit of um, housework, if you like. Um, I'm sure many of you will have been to such webinars before, uh, and some of you I know have been to these webinars uh, before. But just to let everyone know, this will last um, about uh, an hour or so. There will be some time both uh, during and after the uh, presentation from Anna to um, ask questions. Um, but we'll take up about an hour of your time here. Um, and everything is being recorded. So if you happen to drop out for any reason or you have to leave a little bit early, fear not. We will record. Uh, we are, in fact, recording um, everything. And we will then put that up on the transformative teachers uh, website and we'll put that site uh, in repeatedly in the chat box so you'll be able to go back to it and you'll see that we have all the recordings from all of our transformative teachers webinar series going back several years so they will all be there for you in terms of what you can see on the screen well hopefully you can see at the moment i am sharing a powerpoint presentation which anna will also share later you'll also see me and hear me and anna when she comes uh, online in a second uh, but we have not enabled the microphones for you obviously there are a lot of people uh, just over 300 of us in the room at the moment uh, so if we we're all speaking at once it would be a bit of a, a jumble but we definitely want you to interact with us please and there are two ways of doing so uh, many of you are already using the chat box which is fantastic please do continue to use that You'll also see you have the Q&A option, so you can just press that Q&A and uh, put your questions up there. If you have a question for myself or indeed, of course, for Anna, it's better to put it in the Q&A because it doesn't get lost. The questions stay there until they've been answered. You can see that the chat actually moves quite quickly. But of course, please do put your reactions in there. Uh, we, we encourage side chats from people. If you've got other ideas, uh, please do put those in the chat box as well. But probably best to put your questions in the Q&A to raise that query. Hope that's clear for everybody and I'll keep my eye on here and I'll be uh, interrupting Anna every now and again with your questions as they come up, but there will be question time at the end as well. Okay, so uh, Anna is joining us today. Hopefully uh, everything is working with microphones and uh, video. Here she is. I can see her wonderfully. And, and as many of you will know, uh, Anna is an experienced teacher and teacher trainer. She works both in the state and private sector in Italy and the UK and has done so for the last 25 years. Uh, she's currently the head of product support for English language for Trinity College London in Italy. And her main interests are integrating technology into language teaching to enhance the learning outcomes and community assessment. Oh, that's a mouthful. Hello, Anna. How are you today? Hi, Simon. Yes, fine. Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone from um, sunny Sicily. So I saw Italy was quite popular in the chat. Um, so lots of people from Italy joining as well. But hello to everybody, wherever you are in the world. Excellent. So uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and, I'm, and you're going to be sharing yours. Hopefully this will all be nice and smooth here. Um, as we are moving into your presentation, though, of course, we are here today to talk about the wonderful world of chat uh, GPT and AI in general. Absolutely. Uh, and I think probably uh, a good place to start here would be the uh, the elephant in the room, let's say, <laughs> to a certain extent. Uh, although we're not talking about that so much today. 
how do you feel about students using uh, chat GPT? I mean, I would say personally, I'm in favor of them integrating it, using it maybe for brainstorming and things like that. But I do understand and from lots of the forums uh, that I'm in that for uh, most teachers, it's an element of worry. Um, I think for most of us, though, we're quite lucky in the sense that maybe we have small enough classes to actually know our students well. And therefore, it's quite easy to actually detect if there's a sudden change in their style of writing, for example. Um, I mean, chat GPT and other uh, chatbots come up with something that's almost perfect. I would say that language wise, there's never an error in sight. So obviously, if your students are going from making their common uh, errors to having something that is literally perfect, then that would be the first sign that something's not quite right. <laughs> but I think, uh, and we had a little chat the other day, Simon, about this, that um, maybe it's time for us to change a little bit how we assess our students um, and moving away from maybe something that depends a lot on, um, on writing. But I mean, if teachers do want to use it with their students, I think the first step is obviously talking about academic integrity and therefore, you know, cheating, plagiarism, um, maybe honing in on the student's sense of ethics and mm -hmm. their sense of personal responsibility might be the best way um, of going about it. But I think maybe changing and using assessment that maybe can't be AI generated. So, uh, you know, using presentations, projects, uh, debates and discussions where students would then have to go beyond whatever it is that they've produced in a written form. Mm. So um, I think there's space for AI, but uh, I mean, today, as you've mentioned already, we're gonna be looking at it from the teacher's perspective uh, and not from the uh, student's uh, perspective. Also because something like ChatGPT in the terms and conditions, actually whoever registers actually declares that they're over 18. Mm. And so there would be an issue maybe of parental consent if we're looking at um, minors, for example. But I'm sure there's multiple ways that we can actually overcome it as teachers. Yeah, and I, I think it's quite uh, interesting. And Kelly's writing in the chat box here as well that, you know, if this is a tool that's going to be used in the future and we really want to help our students with those 21st century skills, I suppose we as teachers have to get to know this tool. I can see one or two people have written that they're a bit afraid of uh, this kind of AI, but the more we can know about it, the more we can use it ourselves or um, uh, sort of adapt it for our classrooms, the more we might be able to help our own students to, to use it effectively um, as part of their sort of 21st century skill enhancement, if you like. Yeah, and in fact, you know, th that's another side of the coin, isn't it? Because we've got lots of, um, discussions also, you know, will AI replace teachers um, and things like that? I mean, I personally think that AI won't. I think what the risk is uh, for teachers is maybe teachers who can effectively integrate AI and other tech, uh, technology as well. There may be um, at a, an advantage compared to teachers that can't effectively integrate and use technology in the classroom. So I think maybe that's the risk and it's not AI uh, in itself. But, you know, we'll be looking at some of uh, the ways that we can generate content today, as you can see from the title um, on the slide. Excellent. Well, and I think then, that's a, a good place for us to start, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Seeing AI maybe as a teaching assistant, somebody or something that can, that can help us save time, um, but, you know, we're still going to be the ones supervising, overlooking the final output that we give to students. So definitely um, a good place to start. And in fact, my presentation uh, begins with looking at a sort of continuation of what we were just saying, that AI is a tool. And just like any other tools, you know, uh, I don't know, a carpenter with a hammer, an artist with a paintbrush, uh, if they're skilled in using those, tool, those tools effectively, then obviously, um, you know, it ensures a, a good quality outcome from whatever it is that they're doing their task at hand. And so I think um, my message today is that 
we should be using AI from that perspective. So um, looking at how it can help us, um, I think do something more creative, use our time better. Um, I like to see AI something that can maybe reduce teacher burnout. So looking at those mundane tasks maybe that um, the time consuming things um, that we do in our everyday teaching and maybe AI can uh, can actually help us there. So um, I think freeing up time, giving us space to look at how we can increase creativity, student engagement, and also uh, those personalized learning opportunities for all of our students. So moving away a little bit from the one size fits all sort of lesson, um, giving opportunities to every student in the um, in the in the class to succeed and reach their full potential. Now, the first step that we have to cover, obviously, when using AI, and in particular when using ChatGPT, is the skill of knowing how to prompt. Now, um, quite often you see um, expressions like, you know, rubbish in, rubbish out. So the quality of the prompt that you actually put into ChatGPT will reflect uh, the quality of the output. So the more specific it is, uh, the better the outcome will be. And I sort of asked ChatGPT to come up with um, something. And I actually, uh, being a lover of food <laughs> and um, things, to compare it to a master chef. So like a master chef, the output of a language model is a culinary delight. But it's true magic lies in the quality of the input prompt. Just as the freshest ingredients and precise measurements make a recipe shine, a well-crafted prompt sets the stage for brilliance, guiding the model's output towards excellence. Author chat GPT. So that was directly from the language model itself. And I think it sums up perfectly uh, the fact that, um, you know, how, what you ask it to do um, will reflect what it gives you back. So we'll be looking at what makes uh, a good prompt. And um, on the next slide, what I've done is I've come up with some top tips. So basically a uh, top 10 of what teachers need to do or need to consider when they're actually using chat GPT. So obviously the first thing is and I'm just going to, I'm very sorry to interrupt for a second. I can see yeah. a, a few people are having trouble seeing your slides. They're either not moving or we have a black screen. Would you mind just unsharing and then sharing your screen one more time? Oh, yeah. sure. Um, panic not everyone. This is, uh, we'll resolve this as soon as possible. So let me do stop share. And if not, Simon, maybe I'll get you to share them and I'll just um, comment if it's a problem. Yes, you yes, just please. let me know when to change. Right, I'm still getting a, a mixture here of no slides, only the total title slide. Okay, so maybe... Let's um, go into emergency. I will share my screen and hopefully everyone will see that. <laughs> okay, so I'll stop share. I can see it's just loaded now. It's taken ages yes. to load. So. Ooh, it seems to be back again. Could you just go back one slide to see if it's working? Hmm. No, it seems to be blocked, I think. Getting a bit stuck there. I will uh, try yeah. sharing mine. You could just tell me when to change the slides. Okay, Thank you for your patience, everybody. Uh, can everybody see the screen now? Just let me know in the chat. I can confirm, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, Anna, you'll have to do a click noise so I know when to move. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if we move on to the um, top uh, 10 tips, and here we can see uh, the first point is uh, clear and specific. So obviously, um, when we start using um, chat GPT, we need to provide it with very clear and specific um, information about the topic um, or the question that we want in our uh, prompt. We need to avoid using vague and ambiguous language 
um, that maybe confuse the, the language model. So the more specific we are, short, clear sentences, the better it is. Uh, the second one then is context and background. And obviously you can actually ask ChatGPT <clears throat> to take on a role, for example, so you could say that you know you're a, a language expert, you're you are a teacher, um, whatever role you want it to take on. Give it the background information, so that then helps to, I suppose we can say, set the stage uh, for the prompt to be used. Um, and also remember to um, explain any necessary concepts or a particular terminology, and. I mean, ChatGPT is not um, excellent with factual information. Uh, quite often, if it doesn't know, it won't actually tell you that it doesn't know. It will invent something, um, which is a process called hallucination. So it'll come up with something um, not necessarily true. So what we're looking at today is not looking at, you know, creating something using factual information, but actually um, engaging activities in conjunction with other software, other websites maybe. Um, the language complexity. Now, having um, tried and tested lots of different prompts, the more complex the language that you actually use, the more complex the outcome. So if we're looking at something for lower level students, for example, we might want to use simpler language so that the um, chat uh, bot actually mimics what we're doing. So, uh, you know, simpler sentence structures, uh, lower level vocabulary, for example. Um, something else that is worth bearing in mind is that chat GPT um, doesn't have a fantastic knowledge of the CFR, for example. So if we're looking at CFR levels, uh, you might ask it for something for a B1 level student. And then when the outcome is produced, it looks more like a C1 level rather than a B1. So there's still a lot of work, but you can maybe get around that by looking at, you know, lexicon, given a, a range of numbers of, of words and things like that. Um, and, 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 and presumably that was sort of because it's a learning tool that's always learning, right? That, you know, the more of us that use it, maybe the more it will pick up on that? Is that how it's going to work in the future, do you think? Well, that I was thinking, and I was talking to a friend the other day about it, and we actually said there was a decline in performance at a certain point. And I said, well, maybe that's the damage that users have created with some of the crazy things that they've uh, been trying to do with it. Um, I think the more we use it, and you know, a lot of things are still in their beta versions uh, and things like that, I think the more that we actually use it, the better it's going to become. Developers are gonna maybe uh, spend time integrating information uh, into these um, into this software. So um, I quite often put the age of the student. So for you know an age ten to twelve student or something like that. So uh, there's always a way of getting around. Um, let's say the the glitches that are still in the system at the moment. Um, so framing um, prompts maybe with open-ended questions um, and then again um, giving input about uh, you know what exactly we want to do so if we're looking at higher order thinking skills maybe a little bit of critical thinking um, asking for output on activities where students have to analyze and evaluate and express their opinions um, rather than just something uh, basic maybe also um you know there's quite a lot of um talk about these um chatbots being biased obviously it depends on what data they've been trained on so i think also um asking for the prompt to incorporate maybe uh, different viewpoints and different approaches to a topic um will help to get a more uh, balanced view in the, uh, in the output as well. Um, then we have, um, you know, if we're looking at visual prompts, maybe um, describing or actually asking ChatGPT to uh, create a description of an image. 
uh, for example, that you can then use in other software to create the actual image that, uh, that you want. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, I think, uh, considering chat GPT uh, as a sort of colleague, somebody you're chatting to in the staff room almost, and to provide feedback on the responses to actually um, question if you think there are some inaccuracies over there um, in the response. And then that will help, uh, as Simon mentioned a moment ago, actually help um, improve the model and help it learn and improve over time. And um, the last point there to experiment and refine, um, try out different types of prompts. I uh, will see one of the prompts that I'm gonna use uh, this, this afternoon. Uh, I asked it, uh, tried it out this morning, asking it to um, come up with, uh, with the dialogue. Um, and I didn't specify that I wanted it in English. And so the actual output was in Spanish. Um, and so we'll look at how, you know, experimenting and refining so that you get exactly what you need um, and that what comes out of it is um, in response to, to your students' needs as well. So um, moving on, we'll have a look at some of the things that we can uh, do with ChatGPT. Um, we're not gonna have time, obviously, in an hour to do everything, but we can use it to generate lesson plans. Um, it does quite a good job at generating general lesson plans. Um, if we provide it with the learning objectives, for example, a specific topic, it can actually help us to generate um, quite detailed uh, lesson plans, comes up with warmer activities, vocabulary exercises, uh, something to practice a bit of grammar and things like that. Um, we can actually ask it to create engaging worksheets, although I think there are other tools out there can, that can do um, a much better job. But if you do ask ChatGPT, for example, to create a gap fill or maybe some matching exercises, a reading comprehension, um, it can do a reasonable uh, job of that as well. Something that we will be looking at uh, later on in the workshop is uh, number three, uh, developing interactive quizzes. Now, obviously, if you do that just within ChatGPT, you're going to get um, what a class is a paper version. You know, you're going to get your list of questions, etc. cetera. Um, the workshop today is looking at interactive um, uh, teaching content. And so we're going to be using um, chat GPT in conjunction with quizzes. And I've actually devised um, a prompt that will enable us to copy the chat GPT content, the output into an Excel file, save it as a CSV file, and then upload that directly into quizzes. And within maybe half a minute, we'll have um, an interactive quiz ready to go. Gosh, I hope I hope that's broken down step by step for uh, those of us that are slightly uh, less savvy. That was a lot of. Uh, <laughs> well, we're there, actually going, going to do show it live, us, Simon. So um, I'm sort of one of those visual learners, and um, and therefore I will be going through it step by step, and also um, uh, after today's event, uh, providing everybody with uh, a handout. Of, uh, of what we've looked at and discussed. Um, the handout will be coming post event because I'll be asking uh, somebody to, for example, suggest a topic for the quiz and therefore the handout will contain exactly what we did together and not something random that I did myself uh, prior to the event. So yes, don't worry, it will all be explained um, step by step and it really is simpler than it sounds. So um, so don't worry if you're a novice uh, at doing this, it really uh, does work well. Uh, then we have designing dialogues and role plays, and we're going to be having a little look at that as well today. Um, and, you know, dialogues, role plays in general, can always engage our learners and I think offer fantastic opportunities for them to actually practice their speaking skills. And what we'll look at today is how ChatGPT can actually generate those dialogues. And also, um, I think 
every teacher at some point has thought, I wish I just had that listening um, file that could do exactly what I wanted to do, have exactly the Lexis that I want in there, etc. And so um, on my travels around the internet, digging out uh, useful sites and things, I actually stumbled across um, quite a good text to speech tool. So we'll be looking how we can actually generate the dialogue, but also um, convert that into, um, into a, a listening activity as well. Moving on then, we've got another four because I chose eight altogether. Uh, obviously, creating authentic reading materials, we can uh, take a snippet from something uh, happening in the news, we can ask ChatGPT to, uh, to do it itself um, and create uh, reading at different proficiency levels and then uh, create questions that will go with it. Uh, activities working on pronunciation and phonics, you can actually um, get ChatGPT to create some exercises. Uh, you can provide it with the target words or the sounds that you want your students to practice. And it can it, um, actually generate uh, some example sentences, maybe some tongue twisters and even um, the phonetic transcription so that you can actually, uh, if you're teaching pronunciation, for example, um, you can actually uh, get it to do that for you. Then we've got supporting um, error correction. Now, here again, it's one of those um, topics up for debate. Should we actually be getting ChatGPT um, to do some of that feedback work for us? Depending on your class size, if you've got hundreds of um, students and you spend hours and hours actually reading, marking, giving feedback, as long as there's no sensitive data, I think it could be quite a good um, way of giving extra input. And actually, even if it's not the feedback itself, because I always think, you know, the human touch just has to be there. Um, even if sometimes it's just picking out a few good things on maybe a weak student to give them that motivation. Um, but you can actually ask ChatGPT, you know, I've got a student who's struggling with ABC. Uh, can you devise some activities uh, or some practice uh, question stems or or whatever it is that you want them to practice on? Um, and it will come up with that um, uh, that material. So you can see I didn't put providing feedback, but supporting error correction. So you could feed something in there. It could highlight what the mistakes are, um, give suggestions. Um, so, you know, it, it really is up to us how much uh, data we want to be feeding into the machine. And then, um, you know, providing cultural insights, maybe doing, um, you know, tour guides of different places around the world. Imagine all the countries we had, for example, Simon here today, if everybody was putting in something cultural from, uh, from their country through ChatGPT, um, what we'd be coming out with. So, that's just a sort of very brief, quick overview of some of the things that we can do. There are umpteen more, but um, we only have an hour and therefore uh, I limited it to sort of what I class as my top eight, the things that I've used it for personally. So if we move on then to, um, to the next slide, we can see that here, um, I'm looking at um, using chat GPT for that content creation. So looking at quizzes. And what I decided to do was put just a couple of um, general uh, quiz prompts that have been used. They, they work quite well into, um, so they're just on the slide for reference. I'll put them into the handout as well but they're not the ones that we're actually going to use because these, as you can see, um, they're okay. They're still quite vague. I, I do give what it is that I want a chat GPT to do, but I wouldn't get that interactive element that I mentioned before. It would probably produce quite a nice quiz that I could use with learners, but I would still have to do that mechanical part um, and... Um, 
that's probably the bit that is most time consuming actually. Um, and I was just smiling because I was looking at what Murat has written in the chat. So cute that you start your prompt with please. Um, yeah, uh, I found that um, chat GPT likes to have a sort of, um, the same P's and Q's you would use um, using um, with, with a colleague, for example. In fact, I always start, when I start a new chat, I always start with, hi, chat GPT, and he writes back, hi, how are you today? <laughs> so um, it's just one of my pet things that uh, that I play around with, but I do start all my prompts with please. Um, and I'd like to think that it gives me a better outcome because I'm nice. But anyway, I'm sure it would just give a standard outcome, but that's just the way uh, I decide to use it. So this would come up with, um, uh, with a quiz. But we're going to move on to the next slide where we're going to be looking at what exactly do we need in order to create an interactive quiz within, let's say, a couple of minutes. So here you can see that I've created quite a specific prompt. So how did I go around the actual prompt generation? Well, first of all, I, I decided what tool I wanted to use, and I decided that I was going to use quizzes.com. And from there, I thought, okay, so if I have to do it manually, what is it that I have to input into the uh, Excel file? Or what is it that I have to input manually into the website? So I actually got the CSV file from, from the website and looked at what it was that was in each column. And then I've created my prompt telling ChatGPT exactly what I want it to do. So this is obviously the first part of the prompt where I've told it that um, it's going to create a table with eight columns. I've told it what I want the uh, titles of each column to be exactly in line with uh, the titles that need to be on that file. And then moving on to the next slide, we can see the second part of that prompt because I've gone uh, into more detail because at the moment, I have um, given it the the titles of the of the file. It then needs to know what to put into each of those columns in order to create um, my quiz. And therefore, um, I've asked it also for variety. And this goes back to, uh, for example, in rows uh, in column three, in the rows in column three, you've got the different question types. The very first time I used the prompt, I didn't specify that maybe I wanted a variety of questions, and so I just got one type. Like in the um, last column, in column eight, where it has to indicate the correct answer, every single answer was, was number one. Well, after the, the students have done the first two questions, they're just automatically going to go on to the first, uh, first answer. So then... Uh, I refined it a little bit and actually created a prompt that worked better. So we're going to try this out anyway. And I'd like somebody in the chat to give me a topic for, um, for the quiz. And I'll just take the first one that pops in the chat. Birds. Oh, wow. <laughs> so I know absolutely nothing about birds. Um, but I did say I'd take the first one, so birds it is. And what I'm going to do is actually share, I'm going to open chat GPT. And, uh, oh, Simon, should I share? Um, I'm going to have to try sharing my screen and hopefully it'll work. And if not, I'll just have to tell you about it without showing you, but let's keep our fingers crossed. All right, just, just let us know in the chat if you can see that screen okay. Should be visible now, I think. I can see it. Okay. So I'm going to paste that um, prompt in here. And then we said birds. 
And I'll just go back to uh, who put birds in the chat. What sort of uh, target are we looking at? I presume teenage students, adult students maybe. See um, if there's an answer in the chat. We'll so this would be the so, so first we've got just to clarify first we've got the the topic we want and then it's kind of the students that's yeah, the four day, the, the, age the level range or, or the okay. age yeah exactly for uh, teenage ESL learners maybe okay and let's see what it does. So you can see it's creating, it's doing its magic. And it obviously it, it doesn't create the Excel file. What it does, it creates this document. You then, once it finishes, will copy the code at the top. I think we've got a bit of a, a screen freeze issue here. Some of us are not seeing uh, what's been created, unfortunately. Okay. <laughs> hmm. So <laughs> this is going to be complicated, but um, ChatGPT has basically generated um, a file. And at the top of the file, there's copy code. And when I copy that code, I would then open an Excel file and literally... Um, just open a new file and copy and paste. So I'd open a blank Excel file. I'm not sure if I, I can try sharing. So I think we can just see now that the, the text, is, we're seeing the black box where the questions are being created. I think it's just a bit of a delay for some of us. Yeah. Okay, well, I've left it open on um, on that um, that file. I've copied it into the um, Excel file that I would then change, uh, save as a CSV file and not Excel. So in the drop down menu where it says save as type, you would uh, choose a CSV uh, option. I think it says uh, in brackets, comma delimited or something to that effect. I'm just going to call it birds. If anybody can see what I'm doing, I'm not sure at this point. I think there's there's some coming through. There's a bit of delay. Mm -hmm. So it's generated this. So you knew that it needed to generate this because you'd seen what you have to put into the quizzes before. Is that right? Yeah. So I, I started off looking at what I needed so that I could then generate the prompt to do exactly uh, exactly that. Excellent. Okay. So, let me just see if that's saved successfully. And then we'll see if we can actually get it up onto um, uh, onto quiz is. If it, um, for any reason, it's not clear uh, the step that we've done, um, I'll maybe do a quick screenshot um, that we can share with participants so that they can actually see the steps because obviously only seeing it uh, partially created is not um, not the best way. Yes, uh, of doing yeah, this. <laughs> unfortunately, it seems like it's frozen a little bit uh, on on your end. But we can show this uh, maybe in the video. We can cut something together so people can see the steps. Uh, yeah. I, I, for example, have just uh, I see question seven has just arrived for me here. So <laughs> yeah. So a apologies. Stages behind. <laughs> yeah. Um, so apologies. It's obviously something uh, to do with my connection. which is normally quite good, but today we've been having power cuts all morning, so. 
maybe something to do with that. But anyway, I'm going to try to um, go back to the internet, see if I can share. And if not, uh, like I said, we'll just do um, a screenshot, a video of, of the steps that I've gone through. But if, if you can see, and maybe somebody in the chat can confirm if anybody can see, on the quizzes uh, website, there's a create button on the left. And if I press on create, it will ask me what I want to create and I'm going to choose the quiz. And then I've got the uh, option of uploading a spreadsheet. So I would then click on that and literally just drag and drop the file that I want to uh, to upload. And from there, uh, would have the, um, the quiz ready in no time. So I suppose this is something that could be done with lots of different tools, right? Those other uh, online tools that we know that we use quite often, instead of manually putting in and thinking of the questions Absolutely, and putting yeah. them in, once we know the, the sort of code, if you like, that they're looking for, and a lot of these you can just create kind of an Excel of some sort and, and drag them, whether you're using uh, Google quizzes or maybe Quizlet or something like that, there are very similar ways of going about it where the AI, if you put the prompt in, can create the questions for you, right? Yeah, Absolutely. And so um, if anybody would have been able to see it, we would have done that within uh, a couple of minutes. So um, I think if we go back to the PowerPoint at this point, because of the problems with the screen share. Um, anybody can actually try out um, that prompt and see that it, it works perfectly. Uh, like I said, I'll create the little video of um, of the steps so that you can actually see me going through it um, bit by bit. Um, so moving on, uh, we have the possibility also to um, generate lesson plans. Now, here I've put a couple of examples. Um, the one with the environmental issues I've actually created in a separate workshop and therefore I will um, share uh, that output. But what I actually wanted to do, um, and Simon, I might actually ask you if you can um, open the, the link, is that there's actually on the next slide, we have got the lesson plan generator, uh, which will be um, released in mid-October um, in its beta version. And so what I actually wanted to do, and let me just get the link for you, is uh, take everybody through um, what our Trinity College London uh, lesson plan generator can actually do. Fantastic. So let me just get the link for you. Just just while you're doing it, Anna, we've had a couple of questions that um, have, have come through as well. Um, yep. Lots of people are asking about the version of chat GPT that you are using for all of this. Now, uh, the prompts were, I'm using chat GPT-4, so it's the paid for version. But the prompts, uh, when I create them, I always try them both on the 3.5 and the 4 version. So they're prompts without plugins at all. So you can actually um, use and generate the materials on both. I've obviously, um, I'm using chat GPT-4 because, um, you know, the last thing you want in the middle of a workshop is it to give you the message that you're in a queue. It's busy at the moment, please come back later. Um, so obviously uh, uh, for, for that reason. But um, the prompts do work with both. Excellent. And also, you mentioned earlier something about photographs uh, in there and creating images, sorry, not photographs. Yes. So is for those of us that are not uh, as aware of it, is that something that chat uh, GPT can do? Or are you generating something there and using another generator for the images? 
So I have used ChatGPT to actually create the image prompt. And then I've used that in uh, other uh, websites like Tome, for example, and created um, the images that I needed. Uh, we did a, a virtual uh, tour guidebook, for example, of cities. And so, um, you know, creating images, icons for Paris, for example. Um, but there are so many tools out there we're really spoiled for choice. So for everybody, it's basically a case of um, finding the software that fits your purpose, really, which does exactly what um, what you want it to do. In fact, I've just seen Arthur's written in the chat that he's um, experimented with Tween. Absolutely fantastic. Um, there are so many. Um, in fact, I can also uh, include in the, in the follow-up handout um, a list of, you know, maybe two or three go-to places for images, for audio, uh, and so on. But I most of what I've done, I've done starting from ChatGPT, getting it to maybe help me even with the description of what would be needed in another software to then go and get the perfect image. Perfect. Thank you for that. Right, I'm switching now to show our... Uh... Lesson plan generator. Hopefully you can see that yes. now. Yep. My first view of this, so you'll have to lead me through, yes. Anna. So obviously we're just going to click on start. And when we go in, um, obviously we've got the uh, student levels, the target levels that we can click on. Uh, as you can see, we've got the CFR levels. We've also got the um, Trinity levels of exams, whether they're Jesse grades or IC levels. And where the CFR band is broken down into micro levels, then we've got a higher and lower level. So for example, I don't know, Jesse grade seven or Jesse six would be the B, uh, the B1 higher, for example. So we can click on the level and then scroll down and we can decide what skills we want to hone in on, uh, whether we want to include everything, whether we want to focus on maybe on speaking and listening, and then once we've chosen those skills, we can actually go down and look at the language functions that we want to include. So obviously here we've got uh, all of the functions, but uh, we can then go and identify. Um, so, you know, if we're doing speaking and listening, it could be, Sam has just clicked on summarizing, it could be describing uh, past events, for example, or past experiences, feelings and emotions. Gosh, there's a big, big selection here, good. <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, it, it covers, I think, most of, uh, of those CFR levels. Then clicking on next, we can decide the length of our lesson in minutes, the number of learners that we have. And then we've got the uh, drop down menu. So is it just general English? Is it academic English exam preparation? Um, you know, we can, we can choose uh, whatever we want. We can put in the age group because obviously, you know, we might have um, younger learners doing a higher level or older learners doing a lower level. And then from here, we'll click on next. We can put in the uh, lesson topic. Now, uh, I've chosen music when I, um, when I was looking at this uh, the other day and sort of cultural events and so on. Uh, the lexical set, so it could be types of music, uh, music in a particular country. The lesson aims, so, uh, you know, what we're aiming uh, for our learners to be able to do. Uh, any suggestions here? What would you like me to put in? <laughs> Well, um, for the lesson aims, we were uh, doing speaking and listening, so to develop their speaking skills um, and maybe 
uh, to develop their sp uh, speaking skills with a focus on, um, I don't know, agreeing and disagreeing, expressing their opinions Good. on the context of music. If I spell correctly, there we go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, clicking on next and then we've got the context so here um, it's uh, you know teenagers in Spain teenagers in Italy anywhere um, and then if there's anything in particular that we don't want them to um, to include um we can actually put something in that box or we can leave it blank mm -hmm. we can decide what sort of interaction we want to take place when i did it i left it as it is uh, with a, a little bit of everything in there and then you insert your email click on submit and you would receive that. Um, uh, you can put my email in if you want, Simon. Um, and then when I put together the little materials package uh, for everybody, um, I'll also include the, um, just have to put an extra T on Bennett and then it'll come through. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, and then click on submit and then uh, the lesson plan um, within a few minutes will end up in my uh, inbox. So uh, I've seen a couple um, uh, of comments, you know, is it available, um, et cetera. It's going to be launched mid-October uh, mid and uh, we will be asking everybody uh, in the follow-up to today's event if they're interested in participating in the beta version now, obviously, being the beta version, it's like anything else that's uh, available at the moment. Maybe not quite perfect, but uh, we're working on making it as close to perfect as possible. And so, um, you know, we can see in the chat already there's a lot of um, a lot of interest. Now, in the lesson plan that I generated um, prior to today's session. It was on a similar theme to what we've just done now, Simon, and um, the lesson plan looked fantastic. But then at a certain point, uh, it mentioned a role play, but it didn't actually provide the role play. So what I did was then say, OK, so ChatGPT can actually help me in generating the role play. And um, so I went to uh, ChatGPT and I actually asked it to um, create um, a, a dialogue for me. Now, because I've already generated it, we'll have one last attempt maybe at screen sharing. And then if it doesn't work, we'll give up completely. Um, and maybe because it doesn't have to generate it and it's already ready, it won't take too much power and you'll be able to see uh, exactly um, what it came up with. So we'll see if it's going to help me or not, because yeah, here I am talking about all this technology and the one thing that's not working very well is the connection. So I'm not sure if, um, if you can see that. I think we can now see the chat uh, GPT-4. We've got Liam and yep. Sophia we can see, yep. Yeah, okay. So I've put in this prompt. You can see here I've got two, two of two, because initially I put the prompt in without in English. And because I'm asking, please create a dialogue between two teenage friends discussing popular music in Spain, it actually came up with a dialogue in Spanish. So then I had to go back and just insert in English. And you can see it's come up with quite a nice um, dialogue. And I actually asked, you know, include uh, vocabulary and expressions about stating opinions, agreeing and disagreeing respectfully, 
uh, talking about musical preferences and pop culture interests and make the dialogue casual and authentic. Speaking the language of teenagers, how teenagers would talk to each other. Um, and so I thought it was quite nice, the actual dialogue that it came up with. There's some nice, we can we can see there's some nice sort of slang. I mean, I, a few people uh, in the chat box, they're saying that we would need to, to show it to real teenagers to see if it was really uh, authentic or not. But I think, you know, as, as we do with lots of the things when we're creating our own materials from scratch without any AI assistance, we sort of talk to other people or check things or maybe make uh, small adjustments. So, so I guess what you're saying here is that this is a very nice base for everything, but of course we should always read it through carefully Absolutely. and make sure it actually makes sense for our context and for our students. Yeah. That's kind of your argument for, but this is a really nice, extremely quick way of generating something like this. Absolutely. And, and, and sort of another question that came up is, so, so we've got this nice dialogue here, and then in terms of, of using it, I suppose you could use it as a written dialogue if it was, you know, you could make it look more like um, an online chat of some sort. Um, if yep. people are asking here about recording, what would you do if you wanted this to be a listening task? Is there any kind of AI for that? Or is that something where you'd have to get people to record it with you or for you? There's a lovely little tool. Um, it's not actually designed as an AI tool. And I'll see if my connection wants to share it with everybody. But there's text magic. And when you first log on uh, to this website, and if you can confirm whether you can see it or not, it's actually about um, a paid for service for calls and texts uh, worldwide. But uh, I stumbled across, across this by pure chance. And you've actually got the possibility, you do have to have this extension, otherwise it takes you to, to some random place um, uh, with the text to speech function. And you can choose from lots of different voices. So you've got lots of Englishers, let's say, uh, out there. You've also got different speeds. So one is sort of a natural speed of delivery, but you can slow it down a little bit. You can speed it up a little bit. And what you do is basically, if I go um, back here to the dialogue and I take Liam's first sentence, for example, what I then asked ChatGPT to do was to take the, um, to create from that dialogue a table splitting the male uh, part of the conversation with the female part of the conversation so that I could then uh, simply drag and drop the files if you've got it on a Word document, for example, or you can simply paste it in. If I choose, um, I don't know, David, I've not heard David, so we'll just go with David. Um, and I can play it now. Let me just see if I'm sharing my sound. You have to click, you're not a robot. Hey, did you catch the new Bad Bunny and J Balvin collaboration last night? It's trending everywhere. So, you know, you can change the voice, try out Philip. Hey, did you catch the new Bad Bunny and J Balvin collaboration last night? It's trending everywhere. So um, the thing that is fantastic about this is here. You can actually download the MP3. Now, what I did uh, to generate um, a, you know, a listening file was take the dialogue, get all the recordings of the male voice, get all the recordings of the female voice in one go, and then I used Audacity and made it into one file. So we've seen the, um, we've got the lesson plan that we've generated. We've seen that there was a role play, but we didn't have the material for the role play. Chat GPT has actually generated that role play for us. We've got this free tool here. We can generate the audio and then maybe spend less than five minutes even for 
a newbie in Audacity, one and a half to two minutes for somebody who's a little bit more practical. And we've got a, a unique audio file that we could use as a listening activity in class. So you could actually, uh, but then, you know, we could get students role playing, acting it out and, and all sorts. But this I thought was, it's called text magic. And I thought, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and, and as, as that... people are saying here, I guess, like it can only get better in time. Right. You know, as this AI is, is working on it. So the voices and the accents. And then, of course, you know, those of us uh, that are deep and interested into our uh, our listening, we know that there needs to be, you know, the features of connected speech, et cetera. But yeah. the, the more we're using these things and the more feedback that we give the tools, then the more they, they sort of adjust and get better themselves. Yeah. That's I mean, um, I think in the recording that I made there was um a chap called Liam the voice was called Liam and a uh, Phoebe uh, was the female they were the ones that I thought sounded a little bit more realistic but um I thought in general not bad for AI produced uh, voices so there's also that uh, that option as well and um there was a one last thing I've seen it's one minute past six but I think with all the little glitches we've had with technology, we can go over by a minute or two. Uh, there was one last thing that um, is actually going back to the um, to the PowerPoint and um, the opportunity also to think of job interviews. So um, this is another tried and tested um, prompt. So anybody who maybe teaches older students, getting them ready for the world of work, even job opportunities uh, for ourselves, this uh, prompt works perfectly. And you can see that I finished it with, is it clear to you what I want to do? Because um, that way, ChatGPT will go through step by step. And this I've actually um, done as well today. In fact, uh, I might be able to even show uh, the the chat GPT uh, outcome of that since it's already created and doesn't uh, need to generate live. Um, and again, I think it's quite impressive. So anybody who you know may be going out for uh, a first job interview, might um might actually enjoy uh, using something like this so even though i said let's go back to the powerpoint i'm actually going to um take us back nipping backwards and forwards here to um chat gpt to see if we can actually see it and i've put here the prompt it's still loading the screen share so maybe i'll wait a moment So this was the prompt that you had in the, the previous screen that you put into chat yeah. GPT, right? Okay. So I, because I also, I always like to try and make sure, you know, I try it on myself first. Mm -hmm. So this is the exact prompt that was on the PowerPoint slide. So I've asked it, you know, is it clear to you what I want to do? Absolutely. I understand the format. I'm ready to role play as the interviewer for the position of English language teacher. Let's get started. Now, you could also create a prompt like this. Instead of role playing an interview, you could have your uh, students having conversations about anything. And ChatGPT is going to role play that situation. So uh, it starts with hello, welcome, pleased to meet you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, give me a bit of information about your uh, certifications, your background. So I give a little bit of information. That's an impressive um, tenure in the teaching of, uh, in the teaching field. And then it goes on to teaching non-native speakers. So I give it a little blurb about um, what I would say if I was doing this face to face in speaking, this would have been uh, my response. And therefore it comes back to me based on what I've given and then takes the um, the interview forward and asks me about a challenging situation with a student. Now I've always chosen to teach in um, schools that had 
um, problems with dropout, a lack of resources, uh, the schools that basically nobody wanted to go to. Uh, I was there offering, that's where I want to be. Um, and so I had a long list, I could have listed anything. Um, but I thought, you know, everybody has that disruptive student. So I thought, well, you know, we'll try that one out. Commendable how you had a proactive approach. Um, and then it talks about the incorporating technology into English lessons. And here I thought, okay, well, we can sit here all day um, because of my love for technology. But I just uh, highlighted a few things, you know, Quizlet, Google Docs, things that I do, the fact that I run workshops for teachers as well on technology. And it gave me feedback on what I'd put in, the importance of professional development, and where I see English language teaching heading. I gave my response and um, uh, ChatGPT as the interview gave me uh, feedback. And I thought, you know, for anybody um, trying out a job interview, creating conversations, you know, people preparing kids for exams, for Trinity exams even, you can take a subject area, you've got the language functions, you can guide the prompt to actually create a set of questions and get uh, students thinking about their response and maybe even add something to this prompt that I've not included already, which is, um, you know, give feedback on the language use and areas of improvement uh, and things like that. So um, I just wanted to uh, to finish with that because I, I think it was the best prompt that I'd created so far that I particularly <laughs> liked and um, thought, you know, everybody can actually use it. And then, just to finish, because we're going over time here, uh, I just had a little quote that me and my friend ChatGPT created uh, for uh, for everybody. Um, and I didn't put my full name. I put Anna B and ChatGPT because it sort of rhymed. Um, and I think this is um, a summary of what we've looked at together uh, today. So hopefully today's session, despite the technical glitches that we've had, has actually highlighted how we can embrace AI, not as a substitute, but as a partner and, um, you know, enable us to transform how we reach out to our students, deepening that impact and actually, you know, having a better, more positive outcome for every single student on their language learning journey. So um, yeah, thank you everybody uh, for joining us. Apologies for the glitches, but we will definitely um, have a little video clip of the bits that were not uh, able to be viewed. And thank you, uh, Anna, as well. If you've got a couple of minutes, there are just a couple more questions, if, you, Absolutely. if, you're, if you're willing. So um, I guess with one of them, we've been talking about uh, chat GPT for this whole time and a couple of questions here about sort of costing and prices. You mentioned a little bit, you know, that you've got these two versions of them and one is, uh, you know, I think it's 0.4, right? The, or four, which the-, the pay, Yeah, the paid for version is four and the free version is uh, 3.5. So this is something now, that anyone can just sort of sign up to and, and play with the 3.5. Absolutely, yes. Um, 3.5, I mean, you have to register. There's that declaration that you're over 18 and therefore that's why today's focus was on teachers um, and our use of it. But I think uh, the only glitch that you can actually come across is that sometimes you're in a queue and therefore, if it's a busy time of the day and lots of people are connected and using a chat GPT, it may say, you know, um, try again later. Um, so therefore, I guess this is like a lot of tools that we might use as teachers, new tools, I mean, especially new technology. This is something that really we should play around with uh, well in advance of, of lessons and kind of get the, the hang Absolutely. of it before we use it. This is not a five minutes before lesson, can you create a lesson plan for me? This is something to sort of consider and work slowly into our lessons rather than have it replace us. Like, like you've got on this quote here, it's a, it's a partner that you can slowly more and more rely on or decide 
when you can rely on it and when you still don't need it. I mean, there is an advantage to the paid for version because it does allow you to customize your instructions. So for example, um, I mean, I would definitely say try it and see if you're gonna use it because I think it's 20 euros, $20. I can't remember what the currency is. Uh, I think it's in um, in dollars, $20 a month. Obviously, if it's something you're gonna use once in a while, then I would say save your money, use the free version because all of the prompts will work just as good. However, if it's something that you're gonna be using on a regular basis, if you're into creating your own content, for example, and therefore um, chat GPT could be a very strong ally, a partner in crime almost, um, then definitely consider doing the, the paid for version. And I think um, while you're talking about allies as well, I mean, certainly in, in the staff room that I work in, there are a, a select few members of staff that really are really into using AI uh, in their lessons. So it's something that you don't have to do by yourself. It's not just you and chat GPT. It's actually sort of sharing the ideas still with, with yeah. colleagues and saying, you know, learning more about the prompts is something that you learn as you're going on. But you can also share these ideas with other people in your staff rooms, whether they're physical ones or online forums, etc. So there's a lot yeah. more to be to be learned from our peers, which is great. Yeah, in fact, I don't know if anybody noticed, but in the um, so that interview process that was on ChatGPT, uh, the last thing that I shared, there was something that I'd put in, uh, you know, the importance of pursuing professional development opportunities and collaborating with other teachers, sharing our resources and uh, and our, our ideas. And my motto for anybody who's met me online before or face to face is that sharing is caring. And in teaching in particular, you know, it's a very lonely place to be if you're working in isolation. And therefore, the idea of sharing ideas, sharing content even that we've created using AI, then obviously our teaching community grows stronger and stronger over time as we work uh, as we work together. So I would definitely say, you know, be part of it. Excellent. Even Thank if you. you're not going to be the leader of the gang, so to speak, but at least uh, jump on board and see what other people are doing too. Absolutely. Yeah. And and talking of being part of it, you also thank you again for sort of introducing the, the Trinity lesson planner. So that's something that's up and coming. So people should really keep their eyes and ears open for that as the beta version goes out and people will be trialing. And hopefully the more people that trial it, you'll get some feedback and make some tweaks. And then before you know it, we'll all be using that as a, another wonderful tool that will help us, uh, something we can use Absolutely. and adapt for our own classes. Fantastic. Well, um, Anna, thank you very much for uh, sharing all those uh, pearls of, of wisdom and uh, someone else put a nice idiom in, in the chat box just a minute ago that I thought was quite nice uh, but thank you I can't find it now but thank you for sharing I was all trying of to follow the chat but it was going so fast yes it's been it's been really good uh, pills of wisdom it was sorry there we go pills and pearls of wisdom um, so thank you very much for that and thanks to everyone who is uh, who joined us today and who's still with us at the moment uh, do remember that the recording of this will be uh, up on the Transformative Teachers uh, website very, very soon. Uh, and also keep uh, keep your eyes and ears open on that website as well for our upcoming webinars. The next one will be uh, next month. The details of that are already online, so you can register for that. Uh, and I'm very lucky because I'll get to see you all again next time in a month. And we hope, Anna, that you'll join us again somewhere down the line and, and share some more of your wisdom, ideas and uh, creativity. Absolutely. Excellent. Well, enjoy the rest of your days or your evenings for everyone around. And thank you very much for joining us. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye, everyone. Bye bye.